this lecture today we will discuss about the wide area monitoring systems in short it is called as worms. As all of you know that uh, we are just uh, moving towards the smart grid era where this uh, monitoring protection control of all the equipments are very very essential. For that purpose uh, recently if you could see that uh, in India we had a severe blackout in July 2012, uh, July 30 and 31st and uh, we have a very huge loss also and apart from that uh, we have also different types of blackouts in our country and also throughout the globe. So, if you could have a very good uh, monitoring system or some control system online then we can always prevent such huge disturbances and uh, as a result we can save our money and also the loss which is going to be occurred to our society that also we can stop. So, in that context uh, the researchers and the technologists and also industry person and the research I mean the academicians together we are trying to have a very good monitoring protection and control system and earlier we have this CADA system and now we have this uh, improved technology that is basically the wide area monitoring systems throughout the globe it is just uh, going on and still the research is also going on how the best uh, thing the best technology we could have in our smart grid system. Coming to the definition of this worms, it is a collective technology to monitor power system dynamics in real time and also to identify system stability related weakness and helps to design and implement counter measures. The worms uh, technology helps in uh, identifying the weak areas or in identifying the major disturbances and further after that it can also take the corresponding control actions online basis that is the major advantage of this wide area monitoring system that is our worms. And this particular worms is completely dependent on the global positioning system satellite that is GPS satellite. From this uh, satellite the worms uh, technology gets the uh, reference clock signal the reference time frame signal and uh, if you see further in our uh, discussion you will see that the voltage current measures or any quantity we are going to measure basically the voltage current we measure using this uh, wide area monitoring system there the time stamp is very very essential and that particular time stamp is universal that universal clock the universal time is maintained using this GPS satellite that is our global positioning satellite signal. And the heart of this uh, worms technology is our phasor measurement unit that is a PMU we call it PMU nowadays also we are planning for micro PMU system. The micro PMU is basically designed for, for more resolution systems like uh, distribution networks and PMU we are targeting for the transmission networks. Now, what are the goals and the benefits from this uh, worms technology we are going to get or what are our goals. The first one is the real time monitoring and the second one is the post disturbance analysis, third one is the adaptive protection and next the power system restoration. We will discuss one by one this uh, all these three points that what is our goal and what are the corresponding benefits. If we could see this particular picture that in case of uh, worms the PMUs are installed in the transmission networks at different uh, substations, different uh, critical points and from there we basically receive the signals may be voltage current signals and those uh, voltage current signals are sent to this data alignment or concentration where we will get uh, uh, the voltage current data from all the PMUs which are installed at different buses in the power network or in our smart grid system. And from there we can monitor the voltage or current profile or power profile or the frequency of different buses a snapshot of those buses we can always visualize by this monitoring system or section of my our worms. And second one is advanced 
displays. What will happen pre predictive measures also we can display and uh, next part we have the near real time dynamic security assessment also we have early warning system and also we have automatic determinants of control actions. So, these are the corresponding different components of the worm system and after this access if after getting the voltage current information or frequency information further we can take some control actions through our operator through our operators. Uh, this is our data center where we are receiving the data from the PMU or these are, this is our control center from where we can control different equipments which are just installed inside our, inside our periphery of the power network or the smart grid system. And further from this control station just we will just uh, decide some operation and those commands will be sent to the network to take proper prevention or to take proper control actions. The first one is the to provide operators with real time knowledge of the system. So, using this WAMS technology we are able to provide the real time knowledge to the operator who is sitting inside the control room that is important. Now, using this information real time information, so what benefits we are going to get? The first one is improve calculation for real time path flow and optimal dispatch. If I know what is the status of my power or requirement, so according to my rules regulations and real time data status, we can always go for optimal power flow or optimal power flow scheduling. So, that is known as uh, power scheduling, how I can schedule my power so that I can get optimal dispatch of the power from the st stations. That is first and the real time path flow. We can see that where the power is flowing from what station to from which station the power is flowing now to what station. So, the power flow is always in front of us. So, we can always control the this optimal dispatch of the power. Now, it also helps in this regard like provide the actual limits of the system instead of like conservative ones which uh, we got from the offline studies. Because uh, in real state the power limit or the some in some extent some parameters may change because we have always loads on and off may be due to some fault one line is out of service. In that case the impedances of particular uh, line may also change like uh, we have double circuit lines one line is out of service the overall re reactance seen by the system or the generator or relays will be different. Similarly, if you some loads are out of service, so the current flowing to that particular line, power flowing to that line may be less. In that case, uh, that means the real time information or of power or voltage or current or frequency, all the information we are going to achieve from this WAMS technology. So, using that uh, we can further uh, take some necessary actions. So, instead of taking some offline data range or power information, current information, it is always to take decision based on the present real time data information. That is what is this uh, uh, provides this particular goal. Now, the second one is to construct the consequence sequence of this events after the disturbance has occurred. So, how to reconstruct basically? If I have some blackout, if I have some brownout, so how to reconstruct the system after onwards. So, that is what uh, the second goal and so that uh, it will be easier to understand the sequence of events using this synchronized data from PMU. How this disturbance has occurred? If I have some recording online basis, if we can record the data from where the disturbance uh, has been originated and where it is ended. So, those data uh, sequences always we can record by using this type of monitoring system. And the third one is adopt protection or adaptive protection to be appropriate with system condition. This adaptive protection means uh, the protection is uh, always uh, essential for the power system where 5 percent of the total cost of the power system we dedicate for the protection of the system. Without protection, so we cannot save our equipments or lines or any uh, devices which are installed in the system. 
So, and again we have to do the adaptive protection. What is adaptive protection? It is a protection system which adapts, which takes decision according to the changed system or changed system parameters or changed system quantities. If my voltage will vary or current will vary or any line parameter varies or power will vary, then accordingly my protection system will take certain decision which should be correct and accurate. So, that is what this adaptive protection scheme and that particular adaptive protection schemes are possible using this WAMS technology. If you could see this uh, block diagram, the very simple block diagram I have just kept here and this is uh, our uh, power structure, our lines, two lines which are carrying basically the power and uh, this is our PMU uh, which is installed. As I said the PMU is the phaser measurement unit and this PMU is installed in this particular uh, at particular bus in this network and this PMU is sending the data may be the voltage current information and frequency to the control center to the controller. Then the controller will inform to the relay to take some corrective measures and it will just open corresponding breaker where it is desired, where it is required. That is what this uh, PMU based uh, adaptive protection schemes. Uh, the relay itself is a local device and uh, it uh, takes the decision based on its own algorithm if we talk about the digital relays and uh, why they again we are just adding this PMU information as far as the WAMS technology is concerned because to make this in relay more intelligent, more smart, more information if we can provide globally. It is a local device, relay just looks uh, or takes care the voltage and current information at the bus where the relay is located. But if I can take the information from other buses with help of this PMU which is a basically a very good important component of this WAMS technology, then that particular information that those information, those data will be really helpful for the relay to take some other actions or some other necessary actions. That is what this adaptive protection scheme. So, using this scheme we can make our system more smart. And the fourth one is the goal is to assist system operator during the restoration with this PMU data. If uh, suppose we have one smart grid system and uh, we have uh, 3, 4 uh, microgrids which are connected to multi grid systems, multi microgrids are connected to multi grid systems and uh, let us say due to some disturbances the microgrids are disconnected from the main grid. So, again we have to restore the service, so that process is known as restoration of the service of this microgrid system or smart grid system. So, in that case uh, we can to restore uh, the service we can take the help of the PMU data that is what uh, it is mentioned here. The system operator have more confidence during the restoration process because uh, the operator knows uh, what is the status of this line, what is status of this particular circuit breaker or bus whatever the equipment we have all the information are basically with the operator. So, operator can easily take the decision and reduce the chance of recurrence of system outage and also reduce the time needed for the restoration. So, within very short period of time uh, we can just restore the system and we can just uh, basically the power is intact, it is back to its original position. This is a small uh, comparison between the SCADA system and the PMU. Here is uh, the SCADA system if you could just come to the resolution part for SCADA it is one sample every 2 to 4 seconds and that is to this observability is during the steady state only. The observability is not during the dynamic state. However, in case of PMU we have uh, 10 to 60 samples per second and again this is basically designed for the dynamic transient observability because uh, if the it is an online basis uh, uh, information even during the dynamic and transient transient condition of the system or generator transmission line loads. So, we can always observe the what is happening inside the circuit or network. Now, uh, as far as the measured quantities are concerned 
it will just measure the magnitude only, but in case of this worms due to this present presence of PMUs, we can measure the magnitude and phase angle of the voltages and currents of each phase. Like if you have V A and V B and V C, this corresponding phases means the both the magnitude if it is V A magnitude as phase angle of this particular quantity we can always measure using the PMU. This is basically the phasor measurement unit. Inside this PMU we have a um, basically an uh, a signal processing algorithm called as DFT discrete Fourier transform. Using that particular algorithm we can calculate the phases of different uh, signals like voltage signal or current signals. Now, here uh, as far as the time synchronism is concerned, so time synchronization is nil in case of SCADA. Uh, let us say we have uh, two buses now at different buses here what uh, uh, voltage is measured at this uh, bus location and here what voltage I have measured let us this is V1 and V2. Uh, these two voltages uh, are measured at different times. If I want to compare these two, I have to bring it to a common time frame. So, that time frame is missing here, that synchronization is missing in case of SCADA. But however, in case of PMU, the synchronization is present. We can compare these two bus uh, voltages or angles at a common time frame. That is why this uh, satellite, this GPS uh, system helps in, in doing that. It will just provide a common reference clock or universal clock signal to each PMU stations, the where the PMUs are installed. So, the each PMU will receive a clock signal to the from the GPS or satellite. Now, uh, next point is the as far as the total input output channels are concerned in case of SCADA we have like 100 plus analog and digital channels and here we have 10 phasors. this is important. This phasors means it includes both magnitude and as well as phase angle and also we have along with this we have 16 plus digital channels and 16 analog channels. And focus here is the local monitoring and control however, here it is wide array monitoring control. The wide array monitoring means it will just control a very large network, but here it is basically the local monitoring system. What are the components of the worms? The first one is the PMU, the phasor measurement unit. In the next class, we will discuss in detail of this particular unit. And the next one is uh, the phasor data concentrator, PDC we call it. And uh, third one is the GPS that is our global positioning system and which is used basically for synchronization of the phasors of uh, different uh, buses. At particular bus, we have voltage current phasors at second bus we have different voltage current phases. So, we have to synchronize these uh, phases for our further calculation or control purpose. Now, this uh, third one is the communication channel. Yes, uh, without this communication this uh, worms technology cannot stand. So, it is, uh, it is basically fully dependent on communication channel where we use uh, mostly the fiber optic preferably this fiber optic cables are basically used for communication purpose in case of your worms technology. Next is the visualization and analysis tool. This is of course, uh, it is necessary because after getting the data. So, we have to keep it in certain form so that we can visualize what is happening in our whole network and also for analysis purpose we have to analyze further how we can improve or how we can control the corresponding equipments which are present in the system. And also we have wide area situation awareness system this is very very important also because uh, if beforehand we could guess that my voltage is going to be collapsed after certain time. So, always we can take some decision some prevention we can do always for that. That is what the prehand uh, alarm system or some awareness system which is very very essential nowadays. And now the last one is wide area protection and control. As I said uh, before, so the protection is uh, very important uh, even the smart grid system. Now our system is going to be more complex due to the integration of renewable sources and also due to the integration of batteries 
and near future also we are planning for integration of the electric vehicles, plug in electric vehicles. So, due to the integration of uh, different uh, smart devices in the network, so the of course, the system is going to be more complex and uh, definitely our protection and control system is also going to be more challenging. So, in that case this WAMS technology will help in adopting our protection and control system according to the change condition of the network. This is the WAMS uh, process, the first one is the data resources will receive this WAMS, uh, in WAMS technology the PMU uh, basically send the data to the data concentrator uh, PDC phase data concentrator uh, there we will get the data resources and so this uh, communication system we can always apply our uh, techniques or control signals or protection signals for further improvement of the system. First one is the data acquisition, second one is the data transmitting and then the data processing. If you will see the data resources are concerned, we have two types of data, the first one is the operational data and the second one is non-operational data. So, let us say what is the basic difference between these two data. The first one is the operational data is continuous stream of data, it is a real time data, it goes on it, uh, it is basically measured at the end of PMU phasor measurement units, so that is why it is very very vital component of the WOMS technology, where we can measure the voltage, current and frequency uh, in a very uh, rate flow like continuously we are just monitoring voltage, current, frequency of the system. That is why it is a very continuous stream of data is possible there and uh, here we measure basically the voltage, current, phases and the breaker status and so these are basically measured by the intelligent devices. So, for example, we have this uh, for operational data, we have this CADA system and also we have synchronized phase measurement system which is the part of this worms. Coming to this non-operational data, uh, it is basically periodically plot, pulled at a specified time interval. So, this is not continuous mode of operation, the data is not coming continuous, data are not coming continuously. So, that is why it is periodically pulled. And it consists of uh, records of multiple events like uh, series of faults or power fluctuations or disturbances or lightning strikes. So, this is uh, basically the non operational data mode. And here the examples like uh, fault uh, digital fault recorder, we have digital protective relays that is DPR, and we have circuit breaker monitor. So, these are the devices which uh, provide basically this non operational data in the smart grid system. Coming to this synchronized phasor measurement system, what are the components of this uh, synchronized phasor measurement system? The first one is the phasor measurement unit and uh, second one is the phasor data concentrator and third one is the communication system. This is how it looks like synchronized phasor measurement, phasor measurement system. First, uh, a different buses of the power network, mostly the PMUs are located uh, placed uh, optimally to save the cost. We do not uh, like place the PMUs wherever we like, like uh, because at every bus we cannot put one PMU, we have to put the PMUs optimally. So, after placing this PMUs at the critical point where we will have just complete observability of the system or complete control of this voltage current frequency signals where we can measure the voltage current properly. So, after that the PMU data will reach to the data concentrator and from there it will go to the super data concentrator. So, all the basically this data concentrator may be locally. So, in particular area of the system we will just collect the data from all the PMUs which are located inside that particular area. And again also we have another area from where again we will just collect the data from all the PMUs to the next data concentrator. And from all the data concentrator we will just send to the another level of data concentrator called as super data concentrator. This is how it looks like we have taken from this one of the IEEE power magazine. This is uh, let us say one bus in the power network where we have installed uh, P 
PMUs, PMU2, PMU3, and from these two PMUs, this uh, data are flowing to the local PDC. PDC means uh, phasor data concentrator, and also we have like uh, PMUs at other different buses, PMU, so on, because we have just kept dotted line. Let us say we have more number of buses present in this network. And here also we have this GPS satellite and due to this GPS satellite all the PMUs even including this local PDC uh, are getting this clock signal, reference signal and it is just uh, reaching also to this system PDC and all the PMU will just uh, reach to this system PDC. Right. So, here the symbols like phases of this voltages of every bus like u1, u2, u3. So, the dynamic view of the voltage phasors in the real axis and also imaginary axis we can visualize at this using this computer station. Now, we will discuss more about this PMU in our uh, subsequent uh, classes and I uh, will just say this uh, phasor measurement unit is a microprocessor based device. Also in some cases also we are using nowadays this uh, trying to have this APJ based processor or a DSP based processor and uh, it uses uh, the, that uses the ability of digital signal processor. Inside it uh, we can just have different types of algorithms, signal processing techniques uh, which will help us to calculate the phases of the voltage and current and also if you can just uh, make it more uh, uh, comfortable like uh, the if we can improve the algorithm it can also provide harmonics of the voltage current signals. Now, so in order to measure 50 to 60 AC, 50 to 60 hertz AC waveforms of the voltage and current at a typical rate of 48 samples per second. So, it uh, basically measures the voltage currents at sampling rate of 48 samples per cycle or 2400 or 2800 samples per second. And this PME uses basically digital signal processing technique to calculate the voltage and current phases. Already we have discussed about it that we use one discrete Fourier transform technique uh, which uses the uh, one phasor estimation basically it is a phasor estimation technique and due to that the voltage current phases are estimated inside the PMU system. The processor of the PMU basically estimates the phases of the voltage and current. And the measured phases are tagged by GPS stamps, GPS time stamps at what time this particular voltage and current phases are estimated using this PMU device. The time stamp will be also there along with the voltage current phaser and transmitted to the PDC at what rate? at the rate of 60 to 30 to 60 samples per second. So, at this rate the data are transferred to the PDC, the phasor data concentrator. Now, this uh, after this PMU the next component of this synchronized phasor measurement system is the PDC. This is the main function of this PDC are to gather the data from several PMUs. The PDC will receive the voltage current phasor information along with the frequency also uh, from the PMUs to reject the bad data. If some bad data is present then this PDC will reject and this align with the time stamps and to create a coherent record of simultaneously recorded data. This is important because nowadays we have one research field is big data analysis. A particular PDC or super PDC we have lot many informations, information available. So, in that case how to handle this data that is also one question nowadays. Lot many voltage signals, current signals, frequency signals from all the buses we are receiving at the uh, PDC level. So, how to handle this uh, data that is also one big uh, question and how to process it further also that is also important. So, we have to create more, more and more techniques and very strong techniques and uh, so that we can rearrange the coherent the record simultaneously recorded data for our further process. 
And the communication links are basically bidirectional and uh, mostly in the data flows from the PMU to the PDC and some sometimes the PDC also uh, says uh, speaks to the uh, PDC speaks to the PMU also. And the standard which is maintained for this PMU or synchrophaser measurement system that is basically the PC 37.118. The standard of IEEE is used to specify all the requirements or guidelines for the maintaining this uh, PMU inside the wide range monitoring system. This is one of the synchronized measurement uh, system the communication between this PDC and PMU. Here if you could see that uh, the first one is let us say this is my PDC and this is my PMU how these two speaks to each other. These two devices how they speak to each other. The first of all this uh, PDC will send one command here it is written command frame and here it will written start of data as if this PDC will tell to the PMU that you stain the data you start the data. So, what will happen? So, the PMU will start sending the data frame to the PDC that is the first operation and the second one this data will be sent to the PDC from the PMU unless until this PMU receives that stop data command from the PDC here it is the command the frame that is stop data. If this uh, command basically it is received by this PMU, the PMU will stop sending data to the PDC that is what the first phase of operation. Now, this is what uh, we have just written here data frame uh, format uh, this is the operational part just I have discussed that first this uh, PDC will just uh, send one command to the PMU that uh, uh, send the data. So, after that the PMU will send data to the PDC and again the PDC will send another command stop data the PMU has to stop the data flow. Now, what is a data frame that is the uh, format of the data frame that is also important. It has the time stamp and also it has frame type the phaser voltage current phaser analog or digital. So, this information should be at a go and it should be present and that particular data is going to be sent to the PDC label. And sometimes also we have time stamp, time uh, frame type, phaser types and names, analog types, names and digital types and names. So, these are the uh, basically the data frame format. In this format the PMU will just send the data to the PDC, the PMU sends the data to the PDC level. So, today we will just uh, keep here in this particular lecture we have started with the wide array monitoring system of uh, our smart grid system. Now, first we have just defined what is this WAMS and uh, further just we have just seen what are our goals and benefits as far as the WAMS technology is concerned and next we move to the components of the wide array monitoring system and also we have discussed the synchronized measurement system and the difference between this SCADA and the WAMS technology we have seen that SCADA has not that ability to monitor uh, the wide area systems rather it will just monitor locally whereas, this WAMS technology can monitor in a wider I mean range of the system easily and also it can inform us the angle status of the voltage current along with this frequency information. And further also if you can verify like improve the technology uh, always we can calculate the harmonics of the system voltage and current signals. And further also we have seen the architecture of this uh, PMU and PDC system and again here also we have discussed that how this PMU speaks to the PDC that is phasor data concentration system. Thank you.